So welcome back to the second session of this day. <coughs> Nana here, then uh, we are continuing our activity. If you have any doubts, you can write to me at nana.app60 at gmail.com for any clarifications, even in your uh, project locations. So we go ahead on this one. <clears throat> now, having created all the items, what we are going to do is we are now going to keep the stock also. And you're going to get the stock also. So the first item we have a stock. For the second item, what happens? You know, have reference this document now. I have one important OM docs which has been uploaded into the additional folders. You can now see this now. So this everything is there. Fine. Let, let, let me open now. Important OM docs. And then we have one advanced shipping is there. Fine. Let me open it up now. Open up the advanced shipping now. So the lot control item, I'm going to use two lots now, fine. One not one and one not two. Fine. I'm going to receive it together actually. I'm going to receive it together. Fine. Well, click on it. So let us go there and then receive it. So I go to the place. We already in the inventory management. So go to the supply chain execution and then go to the inventory management. And then click on it. And then we'll now go to the create miscellaneous transaction. Drop it down and then it is a miscellaneous result account. I am populating it, make it as yes, no, and then the first item. So it's uh, what is this item? One, not one, not two. Uh, we have to see this Excel sheet. It is D0102. So go there, click on it, D0102, and then give it a tab. And then I will now put the sub inventory as one, only one tab in the FGS is one. <coughs> and then I will now go to the view details and then populate the lots. Click on it. Let me populate the lot now. So put the lot 101 and then give a tab now. And then I will now go for 100 quantities now. <coughs> so lot is now 100 quantities, only lot control actually. Click on it. So lot 101 is going to be 100 quantities. And then click on OK now. And then lot 102. Click on plus now. Fine. Let me have the lot 102. The second line will be the lot one, not two now. D0102, I'm going give a tab now. <coughs> Survey inventory is FGS. It's one, not two lot. And then there's also 100 more this. Go to the click on OK now. So 101 and 102 are the lots now. Find two lots as per the plan actually. So the plan is what? We're going to have two lots. One on one. Go there. Let us now see whether it gets submitted or not. Click on submit now. So two lots of 101 and 102. Click on submit. Both of them are having 100 quantities each. Click on submit now. Nana, sir. Yeah. It seems you know. The items which is selected, it's the same one. One or two and one or two. It yeah, should be one not one and one or two, right? No, no, no. Items are same. For the same item only, I'm going to have two lots actually. Okay. Got you. Same item only two lots. It's okay, fine. I will now demonstrate it while we are doing it. The shipping actually. Fine, go there. Next is the serial generation item. Fine, go there. So I will now have only 100 quantities. So this one is only 100 quantities. This is at the inventory pick actually. We will now have 100 quantities on this one. Fine, go there. So it will not ask any serial numbers while receiving it actually. So only during picking, we have to give the serial numbers once when you make a miscellaneous result or it normally comes from manufacturing or from purchasing. So at the time, what happens? We do not have to give any serial numbers at all. So since the serial number generation, sales order issue, what happens? There's no need to give it all. And click on it. Let us now go ahead and wait. Click on it. Now create a miscellaneous transaction. <coughs> then drop it down. And then we'll now go to the miscellaneous result. 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1000. Yes. So the item. So now see what is the item. It's what? D0103. D0103. Click on it. D0103. Give a tab. I don't know. Put the sub inventory over here. Yes. Yes. And I can very well give the quantity over here itself because there is no serial number. It will be asked for. Click on it. Click on plus one. Next is what? D0104. D0104. 
component. So D0104 from your tab. Oh, okay, now since everything is at peak or ship confirm yeah. level, so during pick only in this item 03, we have to give the serial number during picking and then this while shipping. Fine. So there are two different options that are available here as always. No need to give a serial number while receiving it. So once when you receive it from manufacturing, <coughs> it is called what happens? Items are mass produced in VIP. Lay, let us say uh, immersion heaters now. Immersion heaters are mass produced and then while you are receiving it from manufacturing, we will not give any serial numbers at all. While you are shipping it at the time only, we are going to give it. No, fine. We will now mark the serial number over there and then that serial number will be warranted for six months from the time of sale actually, and not from the time of manufacturing it. So from the time of sale, what happens is you are now going to uh, give the warranty of six months from the time of sale. So for such items, we have to use like this. Getting it any doubts on this one? Next is what cost plus pricing. I'm not going to have any what happens. No, no, sorry, man, the last point I missed out. Uh, I got a yeah. Say, let us say I'm now manufacturing immersion heaters. Now. So in the immersion heater, what happens? It will be mass produced. So thousand immersion heaters you are going to manufacture every day, and there will not be any serial number at all. Once when you make a manufacturing result, now I'm making I'm simulating it to the machine result. In reality, what happens? It will be a manufacturing result. Now. So once when you inventorize the product after manufacturing it, they will now come into the inventory without any serial numbers. And when you're selling it, at the time of picking for this item, you will now associate a serial number and then sell it to the customer. So you will now write, normally what happens is people used to write with their pen. With the pen, what happens is they will now write a pay serial number. And then that serial number will be in the, in the, put in the system also. With a, uh, what happens, with a, uh, also a pen which is a not erasable pen. Right? So uh, that, uh, that pen they will now write it. And then they will now give it to the customer. And then uh, it will be given. And then that immersion eater will be, let us say, 1006. Is the serial number. So the 1006 will be warranted for six months from the time of sale, actually. So for such items, what happens? We'll be using this control. And then sometimes what happens? You uh, uh, will not use only at the time of what happens. Uh, uh, shipping, we will not give the serial numbers, actually. So what is cost plus pricing? I'm going to only test the costing. Fine, I'm not going to, I don't want any stock for this, no fine. Inspection before dispatch. Fine, we'll have to it. Inspection before dispatch is what? It is D0106, no fine. D0106. So it's a simple item. And so D0106. Oh, what happened? Oh, I have decided not to create it. The item itself is not created because what happens? I'm going to demonstrate it along with the serial control itself. Doesn't test. D0107. So D0107. So it's a simple item. And so what happens? Go there. And then give FGS. And then give a quantity of 100. It doesn't test. I'm going there. Doesn't test. Click on plus now. Doesn't test is there. I'm going to click on it. Afterwards, what happens? I will now have substitute items already there. No, no, you click yeah. delete again. Huh? We already done it. So no, you click delete. Delete it now. Oh, 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 oh. I deleted it, huh? Oh, it's not. Plus, I deleted it. Okay, okay. So D0107. Okay, fine. D0107. FGS. And then go point to this one. <clears throat> so click on plus now. <clears throat> so dozen is there. Fine. Substitute is already there. Fine. Dozen each. D0109. So D0109. So substitute is each and dozen. Fine. It is now measured in each and dozen also. Click on it. I will not put the point 100 now. Fine. Let's see whether it saves or not. Click on plus. The, uh, the secondary unit submitter will be coming automatically on this now. We'll now have a look at it. We'll now have a view details now and see this secondary quantity. So secondary quantity is automatically coming. That's this one. So one doesn't <coughs> eight point three. You see, this is a mistake which you're having. This mistake has caused a big problem in one of our implementations actually because it is not exact correctly. It is not exact decimal. It is approximated value actually. Because it's not exact value because of which we had a lot of issues on this one. I couldn't do anything at all. I got a heavy firing from the customer also. <clears throat> then afterwards, what happens? The shipping variance is a simple item. D zero one one zero. Click on plus now. At reveal five, I will not save it now. D zero one one zero. I'm going to have shipping variance. MGS. So click on it and then submit it now. <coughs> click on submit it and see the transaction is getting up here now. So the transaction is completed and click on it now. So now, afterwards, what happens? The laptop kit here, what happens? 
I don't want any kit at all. Fine. Laptop carry keys and this thing are required. Fine. D zero one one two. We need to have a laptop. So click on the create miscellaneous transaction. Miscellaneous result. Negative this. Click on plus. So D zero one one two is required. So D zero one one two will have me. Sub inventory is FGS. I don't know, thousand points. Uh, smaller point is one thousand million. Click on click on plus now. Laptop is there, and then afterwards carry case is there. So that you people can also experiment it. We have a sufficient quantity on this point. All of you can uh, jump into my login and then experiment it because no, no need to collect anything. I've, I've done, done everything. Fine. Zero one one two and then zero one one three is the carry case now. D zero one one three is what happened. So if you don't have time, what happens? Uh, jump into my login and then make an experiment on this one. Around thousand dollars. What ten thousand is it? Thousand. <clears throat> Click on it and then afterwards. What happens? Your warranty is not a shippable item, and so there's no need at all. Fine. Even if you try to put it, what happens? It will come because what happens? The inventory transaction is stockable, they enabled it, so it will be coming. The tired highest, all these things are, I'm not going to demonstrate only for pricing purposes. Now, fine. I will not have any stock at all. External warranty, and then uh, external warranty is a billable item. Fine. Substitute is also a billable item. Buy one, get one free. I will not have a stock. That is what is the number? B01. Dana, are you there? Uh, okay, buy one get I lost a thousand dollars. Then PDO model not be having it. Desktop monitor has to have D zero two one two four five. Click on plus now. Love this one. D zero one two four. And then you tap now. Drop it down. Is it GS and a thousand on this one? The next is what D0125. Click on plus now. D0125. Then you have to have a thousand on this. Click on the FGS now. Okay, then this is the right to make now. Fine. They're all uh, global order promising items now. Fine, we'll now do it a bit later. So we have got this much of items now. Fine, click on seven. Okay. So we have got all the items and all the stocks in space now. Let us now go and then do the collection. Okay, do the perform the collection. Click on it. So let us now perform the collection for us now. Fine, click on it. I will now go to the supply chain planning, supply chain planning, and then go to the plan inputs. So click on the plan inputs. So supply chain planning and then plan inputs now. And then let us now perform the collection on this. <laughs> So if you go on the query on this D01, find here, what happens if you go on the query, only two items are collected, one and eight has been collected, now fine, they will be showing it to you over here. So you can now see that what happens, one and eight are collected, uh, zero, one, two is also collected, ASLR, and that is for the ASL comp, there is a different one. And uh, I made a mistake on the numbering also. <laughs> okay, uh, but, uh, they are all collected actually. Fine, these zero one is a, is a substitute item is there. When SLR transfer test also is made as a D zero one actually. D zero one SLR. Okay, man, the numbering is different actually. So zero one and then zero eight are there actually. The complex transfers is not having any number. Complex transfers as well as SLR transfers are also there. So one zero one zero eight for the both the orgs are collected actually, but the remaining are not collected. What is collection on basically? Who is this? Guru here. Guru, I have told you, you know, fine. Uh, collection is what? Unless otherwise you collect the item, it will not come into the supply area at all. And then afterwards, we have to refresh the global order promising area. Then only what happens, we can put it on the sales order actually. So this is actually a prerequisite only for what happens, the ATP items in EBIS basically. In EBIS, I have not even started actually. So in EBIS, what happens, there is one. Uh, whereas here, uh, it is a mandatory thing that everything has to be collected and refreshed. Then only what happens, we can put the item on the sales order directly. Otherwise, it will not come. So, Guru, what happens in R12, right, Guru? So, we have uh, ATP. So, if you have to do an ATP available to promise, uh, yeah. standard, we have to do a collection. Without collection, it was, doesn't work. And uh, for uh, global order promise, which is uh, ATP based on, uh, that's why we call it R12 ATP based on collected data, mm -hmm. ATP based on plan output. Yeah, if it is ATP based on plan output, anyway, we will do mandatory collections because to run the plan and all. 
and the uh, atp is based on the uh, the output from the plant so for those they had we had collections mandatory if it is atp only but i think now in region i'm not sure why they made collections mandatory probably due to the architecture mm. they made oh. mandatory and then it's becoming very difficult actually and d01 if you give a tab and then make a search what happens uh, you are able to see items oh god fantastic yeah now with your collection also is not showing me oh god good but before what happens it will not do probably they made a modified it i think probably see now all the items are available for me without even collection actually got excellent so this may be a new change i think previously what happens another way is collect it you will not be able to get it now <coughs> it is not showing you but it may not be i will not try to put a laptop or you know find the put on laptop and then select it that it will not work out you know see find the pricing i given all items place of one actually you know see the price is also coming that excellent here without even collecting it is coming no no we did the pricing setup also sir no pricing all items price we are given as one now ah okay okay, okay good the annual price you are not given so it is picking up i thought that it will not come at all previously it never used to come otherwise you collect it it will not come probably they made a modified it i think it's a excellent modification beautiful fine good so without even collecting it items are coming in the sales order means what the collection process is no more required probably 19c excellent that is a good one is a very big problem for many people now actually because of uh, hmm? sir we cannot say maybe it uh, program might have run in background no i just only created now oh, somebody in the break somebody might have run it you are saying huh? <laughs> probably because there are so many people who are working on it now fine somebody might have run it fine is pankaj or what who is this yeah yes sir he may be correct also somebody might have run it i'm not sure about it but if it is without connection is coming it is excellent actually but you just observe it now fine whether it on it i will not any run the collection actually fine as per me yeah know. but it should uh, so in manage input plans right then only we can also is not coming now fine here it is not coming you are very correct now fine in this place it is not coming if i put d01 the items are not coming but it is uh, appearing on the sales order now that is what i'm saying it is appearing on the sales order that is what I, ultimately we need it now fine it is not appearing in the collection plan but mm. it is not appearing it is appearing on the sales order that is more than sufficient actually because this is required only for planning central actually this area is required only for planning central previously only via planning central only it used to come fine okay click on it now go there and then it will not collect put the collect planning data and then let me collect all the stocks also if they have done it this is really very good <coughs> like this go there click on it and then bring everything over here fine i will not collect everything and go to the supply planning data also let me collect everything and let change itself is sufficient and then click on it and then let me submit it it will take around 10 to 15 minutes now in the meantime we'll not start the setup so the ar actually click on yes it will not run <clears throat> good so now it's going on now <clears throat> so it's not right now let us now begin the ar setup sir we'll now begin the ar setup. ar setups we will begin Receiver service. So the first activity of the receiver service is what we had to add this role receivers manager to the executive. So uh, accounts receivers manager that we had to add now. Click on it. Go there. Click on cancel. Go there. Click on cancel. It is already submitted, so it is running on the backend now. Click on home icon, and then you go to the tools, and then go to the security console. So we are going to add the receivers manager over here. Click on the users. Go there. It's a D zero one. Enter it now. <coughs> D zero one EMP one. Let me edit it and then add the receivables manager. So click on edit now. Click on add role. Accounts receivables manager. Accounts re. If you write it, it will be coming. You choose the ORA now. Accounts receivables manager of Bora and select it and then click on Add Role Membership. <coughs> click on OK and that's it. Fine, there's no doubt. And then give a save and close. You know. Then what happens? The business unit we have to assign this. One. Next activity is what? Add the billing and revenue management in the assigned business unit business function. We had to add this billing and revenue management in the assigned business unit business function on the FSM actually. Click on Demo. Come out of it. So go there. Go to this place. And then click on name. And then click on the setup and maintenance. So you choose the financials over here now. 
financials it is assign assign busi percentage busi percentage entry now assign business in business function add a scope selection is there so this since it is a scope selection object you have to go only via fsm and not via this search you know right if you go via search it will not work at all so i have to give a scope selection okay select and then choose it and then go to select and add now again i somebody used to say whether why not we do from this place fine i will not show it to the fine go that click on it i will move it up assign percentage busi percentage busi percentage if i am doing from this way and click on it now it will not show a wrong view you know our view may not come fine with it is not throwing an error also sometimes it will not show you a wrong view you no know, you know a wrong view is come here fine so whenever a scope specific object is there we have to go only via what that the fsm only and then execute the task to give it answer to the error actually so you have done and then come out of it and then this place you have to go on with it with assign busi percentage busi percentage entry now no task is one because whatever i have not in the proper area fine choose the financials now the task is there entry now <clears throat> so go on the choose the scope now first so drop it down and then click on select net and then click on apply and go to task and then choose your view i go there the name is d01 and then issue is coming when selected and then click on what i select and add save and close select save and close will be coming so we had add the billing and revenue management for receivables go down and then here the billing and revenue management for this select this one. this is an additional functionality when compared to ebiz ebiz is not having this not fine this is an additional one and billing and revenue management has been added thank you and save and close save and close Mama, should we also not give collections management? Collections, uh, rather, we are not going to do anything on the receivables. Fine, just push it and then see the invoice. Nothing else. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. No, uh, no uh, receiving of money. Right. Just saying, collections manager, everything is required. But since I am now going to only what happens, so push it into receivables and then have a look at the invoice. Afterwards, I do nothing as such. So maybe uh, some more functionalities may be required if uh, anybody who knows uh, uh, what happens, uh, receivables. Uh, so he is saying collections management is also required. So likewise, what happens, whatever is required, you tell me. Then update other. collections is not required uh, it's not required huh? uh -huh. collections is for if a payment goes uh, delinquent uh -huh. how to collect that is a collection oh, 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 oh. okay. okay. so billing and revenue is good enough to do your billing and collect the cash okay thank you thank you so srini is an expert on financials thank you srini i have shared on bumsi's records mine Uh, just see how good it is because I also want to start to learn financials. Right? Honestly, that's not good. I I looked at it, looking at your uh, content, the way you teach. <laughs> don't think I will be happy with anybody. Right? Oh God, you are so good. <laughs> It's not that good, huh? Uh, Sorry to make this comment, but uh, <laughs> I mean your your classes are too good. Uh, the next one is what manage receivable system options. Fine, take a copy of it. Fine, manage receivable system options. The one. Will not go on. Click on search now. <clears throat> But financials means what? I always have a fear because since I don't know the commerce knowledge, you know, fine debit and credit itself, what happens? It will be very difficult. They say nominal, real, uh, personal, something like that. No, they say. <laughs> I got very highly confused, and then I didn't touch it. <laughs> Some or other, I have a what happens? A fear on financials. So manage receivable system options. The task now. Fine. Click on it. So let me go on and do this task. Uh, click on plus one. So manage receivable system options. It is equivalent to our uh, what happens your uh, system options in uh, EMS basically. So go on then populate your business unit. D zero one under your tab. <coughs> the ledger is coming. Fine. Go there. So uh, uh, what happens? All of Srini and others, please uh, guide me. And uh, I am now going to fill up only the mandatory fields. Now, fine. Click on it. So this is a mandatory field. Discount basis. I will now choose it as what invoice amount. Uh, you know, I'm not going to process the invoice. So what happens? The mandatory fields. I'm filling it up. Now, fine. It's all okay. If anybody can add. Yeah, discount basis. When you set up the payment term, mm -hmm. the terms you have, you choose the payment term where discount is there. Uh -huh. Then the discount gets applied automatically. Is it so? not a big deal? Just ignore it. Is it so? Okay, it is basically, is uh, basically look uh, aligned with the yeah. the payment terms. That's what he's saying now. Yeah. So go further now, down, down, down. <clears throat> tax amount, tax account. So whenever an account is coming, I am putting only one account now. Fine, I have only one account. Make sure that's a liability account. It must be a liability account now. Okay. Yeah. Liability okay. account now. 
because so what about the realized gain i can get any asset account also or ah, you are not yeah that realized loss account is uh, when you do a uh, foreign currency and then there's a translate i mean uh, conversion amount i mean Oh, oh, oh. Yes, there are mandatory fields that not necessary. Yeah, I'm putting an mandatory. expense account over there, you know, fine. I'm yeah. Sure he's saying a liability account. Here I am putting an expense account on this, no, fine. So because you don't have any much of accounts on this, no. Go for that. Go for that. Mm, we'll see. Anything else? So the realized gains account is there. So will that be revenue? No. A gain account is when you do a say when when your currency revaluation is done. Sometimes say today. The current exchange rate is say for India to USD is say imagine seventy dollars. Seventy rupees is one dollar, and by the time you do the transaction and the, before the month end, the seventy becomes seventy two. So there's a realized gain of two dollars, two rupees on every transaction. So where should that difference fall into? If you realize if the loss is if it, if amount becomes nine seven sixty eight, there's oh. a loss of two rupees. If it is uh, seventy-two, is a gain of two rupees. So what is the realized loss and gain? Oh, Until unless you do revaluation for ex, you know, foreign currency transactions, you won't even hit that. So what is the account type saving for realized gains? Sorry. What is the account type? What type of account it is? I mean, is it the? Uh, uh, you can. Uh, I mean, uh, you can put uh, uh, It's uh, you can generally it gets under uh, equity uh, uh, owner's equity, but. Uh, Anything will be fine. We are not, not even going to touch it. Okay. okay. So that's fine. I now filled up these two fields with the expense account. Now fine. Here also I am putting an expense account. What Srini is saying that uh, due to currency fluctuations, whenever you are gaining anything or losing anything, what happens that that will be hitting your accounts actually. Fine. So go down, go down. Because we are trying to do transactions in a single currency mm -hmm. that won't even impact. That's okay. Grouping rule. I will go there. I will now put the default now. Lock file message level. I will not put one. Oh, you are not going to use auto invoice. So you can put one I And mean, if you are trying to use auto invoice uh, interface program, mm -hmm. what happens when you create a sales order? Sales order comes through auto invoice process. Yeah, I am going to use auto invoice. I am going to import the invoice basically from. Uh, yeah, you uh, can put the minimal it? stuff. Not, not. Yeah. Okay. I will be doing it. Now. So this and the, the grouping rule is uh, how you are trying to group your, uh, if you are trying to bring in multiple lines, mm -hmm. how are you trying to group? Default is fine. But now, mm -hmm. I think, yeah, what you set up is good. Right. Okay. Default is okay. That's what Sydney is saying. Fine. That's what us. So we'll now fill up everything. Fine. That's it. Go there, go there, go there. So it will now give us save. Now, fine. Give us save. We'll now see whether it's getting saved or not. Go there. You must enter a value for application rule set. Fine, brother. Yeah, last me first yeah. round. So uh, you are left. Printing options. Two options are left. Ah, uh, the yeah, application rule set and then tax invoice printing options. Fine, brother. Click the application rule set list of values. Uh, what a line and uh, yeah. Line and tax product for it or? Yeah, whatever. I and mean, uh, you're yeah. not processing it, and so what happens is okay. Uh, since we are not processing the AR invoices, it's okay. We are only going to generate invoices and see it. No, fine. And then tax printing it is saying where exactly it is there. Let's see. Come price. down. Yeah, it said transactions in the transactions. Transactions. Go down. Fill. Go down. Oh, no, tax no. printing. Oh, you've got transaction. it. Just pass. Stop. Yeah, uh, transactions. Here, 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 what I'm going to say. Uh, oh, what I had to choose now. Ah. Uh, oh. Okay. Uh, you can select tax. Total tax. Total tax only. Total tax only. Yeah. Okay, man. Yeah. yeah. Tax invoice transaction is only tax. Total tax only. So you know. That is for where. Uh, best recommended options. Now, fine. Go there. Yeah. And then uh, if Srini conducts a year training, please attend it. <laughs> I would love to do one of the, I mean, after looking at Vamsi's training session, I felt like uh, I should do something. Your format and the way you did is good. So I think uh, I'll come down. I think I'll do something and then I'll, I'll, I'll send that, those files to you. Okay, okay, uh, thank you. Thank you, Srini. Share it with others. Uh, share it with others also. Fine. If Srini sends something, what happens, I'll be sending it to you also. Fine. So click on save and close by which what happens, the system options is now completed. Now. Yeah, I will be is required. Ah, yes, it is required. I, oh, no, I have not given it. Oh, it must actually. I'll go the D01, I will not query it. No. IVO, uh, IVO, actually. Yeah, yeah, IVO. IVO, once again. I will now go on and search. IVO is a must now. Click on search now. D01. Oh, it's not coming. D01. Or it is not saved or what? 
you know, I should have given a save and then save and close now. You go to the advanced. Why oh, it's not coming here now? It starts with D01. Now click on search now. No coming. Can click on OK now. And then uh, make a search on this now. Now what is happening? Click on edit now. IVO is a must. Where exactly? Some places we have, we have, we have to put the wild card button. Yeah, transactions. Yeah, where is IVO? Transactions. Where is transaction? Below, below, transaction field. Below transactions. Okay, fine. Yeah, IBO. Yeah, IBO is a must actually. I go there. Let us know populate or must or you know, it's not a mandatory field. I don't know why they are not going to click on it. I'm going to go there. D01. I'm going to click on search now. <clears throat> Capital D01. So this is when uh, on a on a AR invoice when you. Can I give a percentage then? No. Go to advance. It says equal to D01, which is not. <laughs> Uh, go to go to advanced. We have to get accustomed with the way in which it is searched. Uh -huh. right? okay. The master. Right? We have already discussed about the IBO. Right? It is preferable to have the IBO on the system options also. Right? No, the what the the significance of that is uh, when you uh, when you create invoices mm -hmm. at the line level, you will get the item. Oh, ho, ho. so what item is eligible for it's that? For, uh, what I must say, uh, billing also, right? Good, good, good. Right. <clears throat> Items eligible for billing it needs an IVO actually. Fine, go there, click on it, save, save and close. Any other things which is missing, please tell me again. I will not go slowly. Because otherwise, if it doesn't work, it will be very difficult actually. Good, right. so click on save and close now, fine, and then again. If so we are coming. If a customer, sorry, if a customer has to pay by credit card, do we have to make any setups? Yes. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of setups. Oh, oh, oh. So this is possible very much in this place. No? There is something called on payment side. There is called funds uh, capture process. Mm -hmm. There are a dozen bunch of setups that need to have. Can we integrate it to external payment processes? Yes. Oh, it's also possible. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it's complicated, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, there's a gateway process that allows you to get in. Because what happens whenever you do it, what happens? They will not take you to secure gateway. Uh, there, what happens? Uh, you will right. be paying yeah, that one now. Yeah, there's a there's. A, I mean, I haven't seen in in cloud, but uh, in e business suite, it is there are a bunch of setup, and what I heard is the same thing came in cloud. Yeah, we. I'm when I pay it, what happens? It will not take me to ClickBank. So ClickBank will now make take a payment, and then what happens? It will be communicating. Yeah, that authentication. Uh, that's what what happens is for a credit card. If you you have to, there's something called tunneling. Mm -hmm. What that tunneling does is it creates a communication link between uh, the third party uh, credit card provider and a business suite. Wow. Every time you do a payment, first the tunneling will make sure okay connectivity is good, mm -hmm. and then once that connectivity is established, a transaction will be sent to the server. They will validate that the transaction is good. They have the funds; it can be done. Good. Then it sends you a sends you back an authorization number. So all these things need a few setups. It's not one or two; it's a bunch of setups. Very good. So uh, wait, uh, one day wait, I'll, I'll 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 come up with the details. Okay. Good. So, uh, when is this payment done? I mean, before shipping or after shipping or at the time of placement of the order or? Uh, yeah, sure. Pay, payment payment and are two different entities. First, don't mix them at all. Those are two different set of actions happening at two different times. Now, at the time of shipping and billing, those two are linked if you're trying to follow the gap rules. But payment, funds, uh, the, the capturing of the funds is a, is a distinct activity not connected to anything. I may bill it, I may pay whatever whenever i want to whenever the customer pays is when you get the cash so two different entities so uh, two different tracks happening at two different intervals of time i can do my billing on the first of the month i can i'll get the cash end of the month depending on the payment terms that you have if your payment term says immediate payment that means that when the, uh, anything comes anything is built today you're expecting cash the same day then there's a link but uh, you know, I think those are two different entities. Now, what was the question? Sorry. Like like Amazon, we pay it immediately, right? Then they ship it after a week or so, correct? We pay by credit yeah. card. Yeah, yeah. So for Amazon, uh, uh, payment is payment. 
right? Amazon is trying to come up with the process that it has, Amazon has a very custom process. Generally on a New York free side, nobody does, you know, make the payment then only it's, it's, uh, it's like you have on the, in e-business suite, I think we have, uh, uh, we have one flow name. I forgot Sana the name. Cash Where you sh- Sorry? Sana plate cash receipts, is it? No, no, no. Uh, your sales order itself will tell you automatic order where you collect the cash. And then you make the, uh, you know, there's something called, it's just a customization, but uh, generally in e-business suite, mm-hmm. that kind of option is not available. You can, uh, automatic order is you, the moment you book the order, the whole entire cycle gets done in one shot. So that requires coordination of your shipping and everything has to be automated. Okay. But generally on an e-business suite, generally people don't try to, you know, if it's in a, in a manufacturing cycle, there is a payment term. Generally people don't give immediate. Until unless you are trying to do service items, you won't put it as immediate. Okay. A, you know, there's a, there are always incentives and discounting and all that thing comes into play. There are so many other uh, rules. So uh, don't take Amazon as a bottom line uh, comparator uh, this thing. for receivables. Amazon, it's an exclusive, it's a very different scenario. Generally people buy and make payments when the, uh, at their own interval of time. You buy something because you're trying to constantly do business. You will say, I'll make the payment at, at, at 15 days from my, uh, you know, you give time for people to pay. For example, you're trying to sell power. Just a hypothetical example. Your, your power bill is not going to, it's going to come uh, one month before your uh, payment cycle. So there is something called billing in advance and billing in arrears. Uh, billing in arrears means that you try to bill uh, uh, upfront. Okay, so if you are trying to use your power for the month of August, you will be billed on the 1st of August. Assuming what you, whatever the 30 days that you are going to consume, they, they estimate that your power bill is going to be $100 and they bill you on the 1st of the month. And whatever extra you charge, they will try to come up with that adjustment in the next period. But that is billing in arrears, uh, billing in advance, sorry. Billing in areas is something you consume. The you you use the power until the end of the month, and that's when they'll after consumption of the power, they'll come out of their bill, and that's what is billing in areas. So these two are the are the uh, guiding uh, principles for general general receivable activities. What Amazon does is a very uh, very unique thing, specifically for what they do. Generally. Credit card businesses and ACH businesses, there are very few AR transactions that go on in the manufacturing side. Okay. Thank you, Srini. Yeah, fine. Thank you, Srini. Mm-hmm. You can't done now. No, in, uh, so, um, in my business, what we do, sir, we like, like some uh, people will buy online, they will make the payment online, and we will uh, import those uh, details through interface. Then we'll create the order in ERP and we'll manage there. Yeah, that, that's what, uh, is it, that's a custom process. It's not out of the box. Yeah. So everyone will, so you may have certain suppliers that you want to do it. So certain customers that you want to do with that needs out of the box. You don't get something like that. You have to do some customizations to automate the process. Okay. <clears throat> Good. So actually what happens is these things, when I asked my colleague, I, he asked me what for you want. I don't even demonstrate in the class from OM to AR. So he only gave these tips. I mean, you do like this, and then he taught me, and then uh, it's working, and so what happens? I'm following it up. He says that it is just for training purposes. It is not complete, actually. That's what he told me. So oh, uh, you finish the class, uh, uh, Nana. I'll try. I'll, I'll explain you each of them if you want. Okay. The yeah. end of the class. That's good. So why? What's the purpose of that? Okay. okay yeah. So he told me this much you do. That will be sufficient for your training. That's what, what happens. I am not doing it. That is true. Okay, yeah. <laughs> So the receiver, that's what happens. You have to set up the RDS now. Fine, that. So uh, set the RDS for all the receivers that are set. So sometimes what happens, you if you make it in a common set, we have to set it up. Since we are not made in the common set, we are now made in our own RDS. There is no need to set anything at all. That is what he told me. So if you are making, I, because I used to have a habit of putting it on a common set, my BU. Then later on, I changed it to my own RDS. So he says that if it is there, he has already given me in this place, what happens, uh, this uh, task he has only given me. 
So if you go up, whatever you told me that if you are making the common set this many, you have to make a, a custom set actually. <clears throat> yeah, this one. So 29th step. If I am making the B on the common set, this many things must be on your own RDS. Otherwise, receivables will not work on a common set. So he has given these things information. So uh, when you are creating your uh, enterprise structure using established enterprise structure, the system will be creating the BU only on a common set. Right? So that is why financial teams do not agree with that uh, established enterprise structure and then the automation. So you can even import everything. But when you do it, what happens? It creates the BU on a common set. This is highly undesirable for financial sector. So if you're doing it, then these things are required. That is what he told me. So I have written it, but I have not done it only on this now. So I'm now skipping that step actually. So this step, I'm skipping it actually. <clears throat> So, sorry, Nana, these things needs to be on a separate common set, uh, RDS or this should yeah, be on a common RDS. It should not be on a common set, actually. Right? Okay. Separate RDS, you have to make a separate RDS for all these things. Okay. Now, since I have already made my own RDS, this 29th step is not required at all. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So, are we going to create all these, Nana? Receivable auto cash We already created the D01 RDS. My BU itself was on a D01 RDS and not on a common set. Actually. So 29 step is required only when the BU is on a common set actually. Only when the BU is on a common set is required. Otherwise, 29 step is not required. That's okay. what he told me. Go further. And then we'll go ahead on this receivable setup. So this 202, I am not doing it because I am now making it on my own audience, so not, not required at all. Next, what so the managed the transaction types, uh, uh, Nana is uh, generally transaction type, no. is the uh, heart of AR. When you do invoicing, mm -hmm. there are different types of accounts that will fall off, that will have to be accounted for. Uh -huh. So, what should be those accounting types? Mm -hmm. uh, the, those, those accounting values is what you can default it here, uh -huh. is what this transaction type is going to tell you. Mm -hmm. Say you want to try, to, you are trying to create an invoice, you're trying to create a credit memo, you want to create a debit memo. Yeah. Uh, and what values are required? Is what these transaction types are going to define. Whoa. How, given an invoice, given an invoice, what is the associated credit memo uh, with that? All those things will come up in this transaction type. Mm -hmm. the transaction type derives uh, drives what transaction you are trying to do, and for each transaction type, mm -hmm. you will define what accounts are going to come by. Okay. So, click on and, you know, go those on. are the default values, uh -huh. and on top of it, there's something called auto accounting rules. No. What that auto accounting rules will tell you how you want to derive your accounts, which segment from where you no. want to derive is what. Okay. Uh, the both have to be looked at uh, parallelly. Go ahead. I'll now put my RDS. No, fine. that. Click on this. I'll now put my RDS. The legal entity is, is even though it's not a mandatory field, it's a must. No, fine. I'll click on that. No. So you will, and then give a name. No, fine. I will not say D zero one, and or uh, I will not say uh, invoice <coughs> transaction type. Go there. I will now take a copy of it and then I put in the description also. Transaction class is invoice. No, no. He says just now says that there are different multiple things for which what happens. You cannot create a transaction like and I will now make it for invoice. No transaction status. What happens? I will now say open and then go there. Billing is yes. No generate bill is yes. No fine. And then the invoice type is not coming fine. Go there. Credit payment type. I don't need anything. Payment payment terms. I have to give it no fine. Thirty net is the one which I have given no fine. Go there. So 13 into the one, I'm not giving it now. I'm going to click on it and then uh, go there. <clears throat> and then the thing is mandatory here. I'm not uh, putting it as other uh, non mandatory fields over here. Now, fine, go there. So, with which, what happens? I complete the transaction. If is there anything mandatory? I think it's mandatory. Give us save. No, it won't show you whether it is mandatory. Sir, we will not define any transaction type for sales order here. Not sales orders. Uh, we are now creating invoice. Now, fine, once when I push it into AR, we will create a, what happens to this invoice. There's nothing in receivables, you will not speak about uh, 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 sales order. Ah, you can yes. always create a sales order or uh, invoice hmm. based on us uh, from, from when there's a source. Generally, I'm not seeing the source. Yes. Uh, source is another setup that will tell you. When in something information is coming from hmm. service contracts or order management or so source is going to define where you're coming from, yeah. that that's all is the information that you'll have. Yes. But this is a transaction type, what transaction you want to create. If you're trying to create an invoice, what should be defaulted is what this exactly. particular configuration will tell you. That's right. No, but in EBS, we use this transaction type in a, like a transaction type setup. You know, we call 
uh, invoice rule. So in that time, we pass this transaction. So same invoice will be created for that order. We do in ABS yes. for order management. Right. The order management on the finance tab region you are saying, no? yes. 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 So that is, that is not here at all. Arati, are you there? She is also a financial consultant actually. <clears throat> So now next next is source now fine manage transaction sources so I am not going to use it only for import actually find nothing else I am going to keep on the map so I will not go and get my transactions paste it over here manage transaction sources the one click on it click on plus I am not going to get a transaction source this is only for import I am going to use now fine so the reference data set is D zero one I am going to have now the legal entity is D zero one I am going to have now so I am not going to give a name fine D zero one I will not say yeah, import transaction source. Import transaction source. Description also I know. Paste it away now. Take it away. description. So the type is not manual, it is imported now. I'm not choosing it only for imported now. Imported. The, the reason you're making it imported because you are getting it from sales orders. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting from sales orders, so that's why I'm now making the source as imported now. If you're getting anything, uh, invoices can come from service contracts as well. For them, it will be imported as well. Uh -huh. Anything from any source that's yeah. coming is imported. Yeah. Otherwise, coming, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, if you're trying to do anything in AR, only AR, then it will be manual. Uh -huh. So the from date is manual mandatory. I'm not putting the from date over here. The remaining nothing is mandatory. Uh, standard transaction time. I'm not putting anything over here now. Let's not see whether it works or not. I'm grouping those. And there are so many concepts of that which will be explained only in a year training. Actually, even uh, Srini will not be having time to explain all this now. So we'll now leave it as such now. Fine, go there. So uh, uh, that's it. Fine, my uh, transaction source is there. Uh, standard transaction time. We'll drop it all. But there are so many things that I don't want to do it now. Fine, <laughs> leave it as such now. Okay, fine. With this, it'll now work. Now. Fine, give a save and close now. Give a save now. We'll see whether the mandatory fields are filled up or not. Not save now. I'm going to save. So I am now working fine with that. I have now completed the transaction source. Now. Imported transaction source is now completed. If you go on and query for it now, find D01. And I click on search now. Let me find the imported transaction source. Now go for the next two. Find that. Remit to address. I don't know why it's required, but uh, what happens? Uh, he is saying that you follow, don't ask questions and all. <laughs> so I was doing it actually. And click on my remit to address. In, in e business suite, remit to address. Yeah. Um, the format in which you want to get the bill. So address has a significance. So your first address, first segment will tell you mm. your remit to address, any alternate names you want to use it. Some people do not want to use it. Being a payment, he has to pay to this address only. That's what you're saying, huh? Yeah. Uh -huh. So that's why. Is it, is it necessary for me to create anything here? Not a oh, Not necessary, just leave it. Leave it now. I will not leave it because already we have a United States own address is available here now. Yeah. So postal code from 00 to 9999, where we can very well remit to. That's what he's saying. Correct. So it is not required. I am not. Skip this step now. Because without knowing, I'm not doing it now. He's saying that what happens is our address now. Now, auto accounting. Manage auto accounting rules. We don't do it now. Auto accounting rules. <clears throat> So this is what I when transaction type and auto accounting go together. Uh -huh. So this will tell you how when you create an invoice, what should be your revenue account, what should be your receivable account, what should be your yeah. cash account, what should what should be your freight account. All those things will come up. Uh, this will allow you to define what how you want these accounts to come from, which sources you want to get it defaulted depending on the transaction type. Okay, okay. I will not give a plus now. I'm not going to get the auto accounting. So here I will not put my business unit over, you know, D01. So he told me that what happens except deferred tax, you define everything. Even if you miss one, what happens? Your auto accounting will fail actually. Auto invoice creation will be failing. So I'm not doing it. I find auto invoice clearing. And then you told me you put any account, it's okay. And the constant value you asked me to put my 10. And I will not put that over here. And auto invoice clearing also is not needed. Uh -huh. uh, auto invoice clearing is needed when you define your source. Uh -huh. a, a transaction type you will spe uh, in a source you will specify mm -hmm. do you want um, 
Or uh, can you go to a transaction? Yeah, I think go ahead and do it. Whatever you're trying to do. Yeah, but in the time of transaction, I mean, which, of five, day, which I mean, thought now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead. I think I don't want to dis- uh, you know change or alter anything. I think go ahead with what you're trying to say. I don't want to delay anything. <laughs> this way, what happens if I do it? It's working actually fine. That's what it is. I will not give order. Oh, he's saying, Srini is saying order inverse clearing is also not required. I click on create another now. So I click on create another, drop it down. I will not go for the NIPBINS receivable no fine. And he's saying that in the training, it's okay. Any account is okay for me. That's what he's saying. I have only one account. I'm putting it down. True. In reality, they will be putting the, all the accounts. In yeah. Basically, these all are basically accounts, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I click on create another. Second is now completed. Bill receivable is now fine. I click on it. I will not defer tax. I'm now leaving it now fine. Go to the factored bills receivables. And then I click on it. And then tell. No, there is 100. Click on it, it's 1000. <coughs> create another. <coughs> Go there. And then afterwards, Sprite. Go there. So click on 10 more. 100. Then you go there. Click on it, 1000. Click on create another. <coughs> Sprite is completed. Next is receivable. So click on it, it's 10 more. 100. Thousand click on create and the receivable is completed. Go there and then remitted bills receivables. So learn it fully from a financial team about the importance of it and then what is it, which has to be done for what activity. Find that's also has to be done. Remitted bills receivables in the revenue. Click on hundred. Click on create another tax. Ten hundred thousand. Click on create another tax is now completed. Click on create another. And then go to the unbilled receivables. Click on it. Then unearned revenue. <clears throat> then unearned revenue. Unpaid bills receivables. Click on it. Then click on hundred. Then click on thousand. So we are now completed everything fine. Click on done now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, are there. If you don't remember plus one, you see that eleven are there. Now. Click on it. G is it again? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Click on it. There is a deferred tax. We are not doing fine. Everything has been done now. No cancel. So we are not doing fine. Go there. Click on D zero one. And then give a search, no find anything has to come out. Oh God, I have not saved it. Is it so? Oh, if I give a save now, nothing is coming there. Oh God, so I had to again do it now. <laughs> I made a mistake here. I started querying it on the line. Click on it. Account type is not coming at all here. I will now give a save and close and then come out of it. And give a save and close. I will again go there and then query for this number and click on second post. And then D01 and then make a search now. Right? Nothing is there. I have forgotten to save it actually. D01. Oh no, no, it's a mistake actually. I should have given a save and then afterwards started searching for it now. Right? Click on 10 now. 100. Go oh, there. 1000. So first is what? Auto invoice clearing and click on create another. Bills receivables. 10. 100. So bills receivables. And then factored bills receivables. 10. Click on enter. Nana Pradip here. Are we creating same thing again? Huh? Are we creating same thing again? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. Because 
it has not got saved now fine there is i am not saying anything you can see now right i have not saved it actually i made a mistake actually click on save now so i just need to long give a save now i'm going to save now i'm not coming okay let me finish over the visible song <clears throat> yeah i'm not going properly or not so please tell me i mean a mistake 11 has to come now actually ultimately 100 So receivables, I'm going to click on and drop it down. Click on receivables, write this. I will know again. I, I think I made a miss something. I have a doubt. Then another hundred. <coughs> and I click on thousand now. Create another. Uh, what are the last one I created? Remitted bills, receivables, or receivables? Okay. Any of we'll now come back and then see this now. Uh, after saving it, whatever we can even come up and see what is missing on this now. No, no. Maybe click on done and then save it and then check whether it is there. Oh, oh, oh. done. Okay. And then give us save now. That's what you're saying. Save. You enter a value. Last one you entered as zero hundred. Oh, 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 oh. The last one, huh? Yes, revenue, revenue one. Account type revenue. Huh? Account type revenue. Account type huh? revenue. Account type. The first line. The first line. First line. I made a mistake. You know, I'm not saving it. Give us save now. Okay. 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 Fine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven are there. Fine. I will not go and add it. So if we drop down D zero one, then do a tab. You will not see right from the beginning now, fine. Right? Auto invoice clearing is there. Auto invoice clearing is there. Bills receivable is there. Bills is there. Factored bills receivable is there. It is also there. Freight is there. Freight is there. Receivable is there. Uh, receivable is there. Limited bills receivables. Uh, limited bills receivables is there. Revenue revenue is also there. Then tax okay. I am going proper tax. So we can even view the value on the source also. So that also you learn from the financials now. So tax, I'm doing it now. Click on create now. Tax is there. The unbilled receivables. Generally, value sources will you can source from the transaction type that you are set up, salesperson. Site that is supply customer site. Oh, okay, okay. <clears throat> salesperson is uh, say from a salesperson who which, which who is a uh, uh, from uh, CRM. You'll have uh, uh, resources mm -hmm. for those salespersons mm -hmm. and standard lines or either item lines oh. or something called uh, memo lines. You'll create uh, just like uh, the transaction time. You'll create yeah, another line. beginning the account. Huh? Fine. So for yeah. any segment, we can uh, bring it from other places. Then. Yeah, so you'll specify, uh, yeah, so standard lines is item lines or memo lines. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, uh, you'll specify when you specify the value source as transaction type, mm -hmm. your company segment always comes from the transaction type. Oh, okay, okay. you are right now what you gave is a constant value that means always the uh, uh, your company segment when your account type is unbilled receivables, that's going to be uh, ten, always 10 is going to be the value. But if you say from transaction type, mm -hmm. at the time of creating the transaction type for the invoice, you have you did not populate any of these accounts. Okay. Yeah, uh, you populate any accounts actually. So if you were to populate an account, you if you give the transaction type as source, it will default from the transaction. Okay, okay. got it. So unbuilt receivables fine. I click on create another now. Click on unbuilt receivables. Uh, unbuilt receivables then unearned revenue. Ten. Uh, earned revenue, unknown revenue, all these are advanced concepts. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. No, no, you won't even touch it. If for a standard thing, if you have a, um, a receivable account mm -hmm. and a revenue account, you're good. 
Okay. You don't need anything else. Mm -hmm. So click on done now and then you will save now. You will save. I will save now. I won't count it now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 are there. Actually. All things. So all the auto counting uh, will set now. So he is saying that some of them are not required. So you can go. Now we will now go and then open the GL period now. Thank you. We had to open the GL period actually. Okay? And then uh, 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 let me tell us what, uh, what happens. Set the auto period. Okay, go and then open general accounting and then period open close. Go there. Open it. So click on it. Click on go. And then we'll now go and then open it. We'll now go to the general accounting and then go to the period close now. Then we'll now open the GL period. And then afterwards the receivable period actually. So click on this one. <coughs> go there. So GL August 19 is never open now. So we'll now open it. So click on general ledger. It will now open the GL period first of all. Click on it. The first period is January 19. Click on it. January 19 is the first period. Click on it. So click on this one. Why this one concurrently we're running. So we have a refresh icon through which what happens? It's now saying the process is submitted with the big <laughs> let us know. And then you can refresh it now. So one thing is refresh. This is a refresh icon is not available in cost management as well as your other place. Right? Only for the GL AR projects and all fund, they're having this refresh icon. The cost management also we don't have. I, I'm not sure about it. And one thing is not there. So. Now we go there and then keep your cousin and then go to the actions and then go to open the target period now. And open the target period. And then choose the period now. And they are now open it up. Are they up to October. Uh, now you can open up to December also. November also will open up. If anybody is working on this instance, what happens? You can even try this one. Open up. So click on S1. You will not try to open up everything. So people can even work on this instance for straight away testing anything. Now fine. They can even set up the financials also if they know. And then go on. Now up to November is open now. The, the, the December is only future now. So up to November the period is open. So click on that. Now before you go on and open the receivables period, what happens? You Sign out and sign in. That is what is recommended actually. And receivables period. So if you go to the receivables period, sometimes what happens, it will not show you properly. The GL is open now. Right? If you go there, go to the actions and then what happens, open the period. So here, what happens, it will not even show you now. Not show you. So it's preferable to what happens, is sign out and sign in now. Sign out and sign in. After the GL is open, what happens, you sign out and sign in and then of course go there. Click on it. Sign out and sign in. That is what the financial team always says. Actually. Oh God, the authentication has failed. I think the password has got changed here. I should have reset the password and then you just understood the username. They might have reset all the passwords actually. All the passwords are reset. One second. I should have, I thought of doing it, but I have forgotten the things. I will now go there. ERP guide now. They have recently given the password now. Let us now use this one and use it here. Whether that password works or not. Works. So we'll go to this place. Oh God, one more thing is there. Is it now? Whether it will work or not. We must see if one more screen is open now. <laughs> if it works, it's nice now. I click on it. Click on OK. I think I have I'm logged out now. It will not work. If it goes to the one, it will not work. Because the inactivity system is now open. Ha! <sighs> We'll go there and then put this one now. We'll go there and then have a look at it. We'll go to this place and then we'll now take up this password. We'll go to this place, paste it over here, click on it, sign in now. Everything has not expired now. I'm going to click on put up password. <clears throat> so I will now put test underscore user now. Forgot password. I'm going to click on the submit now. To get an input, it will be great actually. I don't know to which one. Ah, I got it. Fantastic. <laughs> the reset is working now. I click on it. So the reset password is working. And go there. It's a D01 underscore. I saw it. So what is the current password it is asking for? Reset password. I will now say welcome one two three and then welcome one two three and then click on submit now. 
and the password made and the reset mountain was yours. So let us now go via test user, test underscore user, and then welcome one two three under the password. And then of course, I know this is the password from inside my password. Well, so I got the tools, and then here I go to the security console, and then let me reset my password. Let me use this. Now. So the D zero one is the one entering now. <coughs> so let me use the password. So on Saturdays they visit it. Right? So remember to what happens? Open one of the screens. Open so that you will be able to before you log out. You please reset and then come back now. Remember this instance is working perfectly. They are not they are not purged any data. Right? Remember they are not purged any data for almost more than a month's time. On Saturday when you are working. What happens? Uh, Indian time evening or uh, US time morning, you keep this system open in one screen, and then whenever you're logging out, what happens? You come and then do it, and afterwards do it. Are you clear, not anybody? Anybody can say yes that you understood it. So yes, yes. 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 So yeah, clear, no, no. Yeah. yeah, on Saturdays, what happens uh, in the Indian time? This time, approximately seven o'clock, or rather maybe and from four o'clock, four a.m. or four p.m. onwards, what happens? Uh, they may even reset any time. But fortunately, they are not purging out the data, right? so that what happens, you will be able to work on this instance. On a Mozilla browser, what happens? Open it up and then keep it, and then before you log out, you you do the what's called the reset of your password and then go inside. Now you go there, go to the general accounting, and then here what happens? You go to the period close now. Click on the period close. So now receivables is now open. GL is open for August 18. Fine, go there. Click on the receivables now. Now it's asking. This question is asked only when you log out and log in. Remember, when you log out and log in, it will come now. Find that I'm not choosing January 19. And then click on OK now. No, no. So it's now going to open up. Find click on and now open up to November now. So here also we have a, a refresh icon over here now. The process is submitted. I'm going to click on it. So it will open up. I go to the actions and then go to open target period. I will now open up to November. November is now open. Okay, open up. up to November it will open. So open up the uh, periods now. So up to November is open. Click on this. And then afterwards, what happens? Uh, you go and then uh, I will uh, open the periods. And then I have to give the data access also. Fine. Then say the data access is not being given. I have to give the data access. I have not written it here. Okay. Fine. There is one thing which is missing now. Click on this. So let us now give that data access. Right. And then I go to the setup and then notice and give the data access to this. Click on search. Now. And then percentage. Data percentage. Access percentage. Oh, is it mandatory for data access for receivables and payables? <laughs> for receivables. Because in payables, I was able to create invoice uh -huh. uh, without giving data access. That is why I'm asking. Good, correct. But I don't know, but I'm just giving it because I've given only one role. It's okay. Fine. Again, I don't know. Fine. I'm just giving it now. And D01 underscore EMP1. So it's the accounts receivables. Accounts number in the tab now. Accounts receivables manager. The only one I added. Go to the business unit. I don't know whether it's really required or not. Well, based on what you're trying to do, uh, if Oracle would have been smart, the moment you create a, a role, by automatically they should have created the data access. Yeah, right? yeah, well, they should have done it. Huh? Fine. They're all some simple things. That yeah, from GL standpoint, uh, once you create a ledger, automatically a data access set gets created. Similarly, they should do it for other modules as well, as at least for a base configuration. Then what I heard was uh, in earlier releases, it used to create a data access role automatically. But uh, now we have come up with this data access uh, option, so which we have to give manually. I don't know. I read it somewhere, but not sure if that is the case. Yeah, Vikram, that's correct understanding. It was earlier actually known there was no data access at concept. Mm. It was introduced from release twelve, I guess. The data data access set came up in receiver in general ledger, and that has a specific functionality. And what they came up with is a good one. Mm -hmm. If you have multiple countries implementation, and if there's one user who wants to uh, access data with respect to different countries, mm -hmm. data access set helps them. And if you do not want them to make uh, see or perform transaction on other countries, 
those that thing will will work fine but from gl standpoint was an auto only speaks on it's uh, in only gl you have it but you don't have it in every module now they have extended it to every module mm. i don't know the implications of it is i mean they could have defaulted one yeah that's what and, and that should have simplified i mean if anybody needs more they have to do it themselves exactly yeah they should have defaulted but that is not also getting defaulted and Sri, he told me that what happens if you're using cache management, this profile has to be set now. I, I don't know. I will not bypass this. Profile I, option. I think I will not bypass it. I don't think it's quite for training. Um, uh, that, yeah, that if you have, uh, for now, you can go ahead. If you are, this is, um, uh, if you are trying to create a credit memo, mm. uh, you have to go with this. I mean, for now, you don't need it. Yeah, yeah. That's what he told me. Uh, you know, you gave me, but uh, you may even bypass. That's what he told me. And I'm not bypassing it. So this completes the receivable setup, and then we are now going to create a sales order and then push it into AR now. So what, in other words, what that does is, when you are trying to create a credit memo, yes. what should be your receivable account? Mm -hmm. Your receivable account, you may on your transaction type, you may define a specific receivable account for that credit memo. Mm -hmm. But this profile will tell you, don't use that setup. Mm -hmm. Whatever is a receivable account that is set up, in the invoice, use that for the credit memo. That's what this option will do. So we have completed this. Uh, what happens? The receivable setups now fine. Everything is now completed. The basic receivable setups are now completed. So we have to the invoice and then push it in the AR now. Yeah. Sir, regarding this uh, role and uh, manage data access, what I see, if you have role, you can go in a screen and check that data read only. If you perform real time good transaction, you should have a data access uh, role. Okay. So with the role, you can go and see the data, all those data. If you want to perform the transaction, you should have that data access. So, okay. so now what happens? We are now going to get a sales order and push the AR and then do the AR invoicing now. So that will be doing it after a cup of tea, actually. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Nana. Seven forty-five. Yeah, at, uh, at uh, seven forty-five. Seven forty-five. All the bills receivable, factored bills receivable. Those are all advanced concepts. That is, mm. it's an alternative to collection. Mm. Somebody you are trying to say you are make, taking a commitment from the customer that he is not going to pay you immediately, but then at a specific maturity date, he will say after my invoice is done, I will after three months I will make the payment. In a collection process also, you'll do something similar. But instead of, a, this is an alternative way people try to use. Uh, that's why I said it's a general, it's a advanced concept, not generally practiced or followed. Have a good cup of tea, we'll talk once again. <laughs> yeah, we'll have a cup of coffee and then come back. 7.45 uh, India and then 10.15 uh, a.m. Eastern actually.